Over to you, Tom. Great. Well, uh, welcome everybody to our launch of the e-learning program on sustainable finance. It's great to, to have this opportunity today to talk you through uh, the SDG Finance Academy uh, that UNDP has been running with partners and, and colleagues all over the world for the last uh, year and a half, two years, but, but also to home in on these excellent e-modules that uh, we hope uh, will really help in, uh, in, in, in helping colleagues learn uh, around some of the sustainable finance agenda that UNDP is working uh, 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 with its colleague, with its partners around the world to deliver. So really great to have you all uh, with you. I, I know we have a great team there supporting uh, by uh, uh, making sure that everyone's aware of etiquette as has just been put in the chat. We've got a, a fantastic panel that's coming up to uh, really talk through how the rubber hits the road when it comes to training capacity development and technical support on sustainable finance. Really looking forward to that panel. We've got some time for Q&A and, and, and also some, some closing remarks uh, at, at the end, all to be done in an hour. So, um, you know, time is, is tight and I'll be uh, draconian in my moderation and brief in my uh, opening remarks, which uh, I hope will just uh, set the scene. I, I believe, though, before we get into that, we are uh, going to be doing a bit of a Zoom poll. So um, is that right, uh, Nadine, a, a Zoom poll? That's right. It's starting just now. So there we go. Don't be shy. Let's get in there. Um, and uh, Nadine, how many questions have we got coming? Only one. Okay, good. That's easy to manage. So uh, we're looking at the uh, 180 participants. We see about a third of you have now done it. Let's get going. We've got to get over a half, at least to uh, 60%, 70%, 80%. Oh, look, this is very good. So we're seeing quite an equal uh, uh, set of uh, weightings here. What area of sustainable finance would you like to learn more about? And uh, top runner there, unlocking private capital for the SDGs. And I don't think that's a surprise, uh, such a critically important agenda, but also perhaps one of the newer agendas for development institutions like UNDP and many of our partners. So that featuring heavily, and then a, a more equal rating uh, around some of our work, uh, insurance and risk finance, budgeting, tax, as well as, as debt. So um, uh, that's good to see. I think we've, I think we've got enough there to 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 have taken the temperature. So uh, front runner there on unlocking private capital. Thanks, Nadine, for uh, for running that poll. And uh, we'll be coming back to these topics uh, through the course of 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 the day. So, colleagues, let me let me just say a few words to, to set the scene before we get into the very exciting uh, panel in front of us. And you know, I, I know that we live in a time really of, 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 of quite significant doom and gloom. Uh, we're all aware of how the pandemic and financial crisis have played out in creating a financial landscape, which is really very challenging both in terms of a gap, a financing gap that we know has increased over 50% uh, in terms of financing required for SDG achievement. We know that the financing needs in essence have increased. Um, and at the same time, we know that many countries, 54 by UNDP's own analysis, are falling into or close to falling into debt distress. So it's a really constrained landscape we work in. But we also know uh, that actually it's not just about a financing gap. It's far more complicated. It's actually 
that a whole financial system is working uh, in many ways counter to our sustainable development goals and objectives. We know from a recent IMF report that uh, uh, in 2022, uh, fossil fuel subsidies are peaked at $7 trillion. We know that uh, commercial banks are continuing to invest in fossil fuels, accumulating to some $4 trillion again uh, in 2022. So it's not just that there's a financing gap, it's that fundamentally decisions are being made around finance that are going in the wrong direction. The system is, 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 is broken. And yet we know also that within this challenging context, within this systemic failure, there is a, a huge amount of, 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 of wealth and money. We know that in the private uh, uh, assets realm, there's some $463 trillion, just less than 1% of that would, uh, if monetized uh, 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 and uh, flowing to the right geographies and sectors, deliver on that gap that I identified earlier. So UNDP is really looking at this issue from a systemic perspective. And our academy is built around building a sustainable finance architecture where decision-making uh, includes a calibration of risk and return on development impact, not just financial return. And that's really why uh, we've developed our SDG Finance Academy, to work with our partners to develop common approaches and uh, a common language around uh, what we need to do to reform the, the, the financial architecture to, to be genuinely a sustainable finance architecture. Through the academy, uh, we are working in partnership, obviously across UNDP, but also with governments, the private sector, financial institutions, and uh, the philanthropic sector. And I, I just one final framing remark is we really see our endeavor as a development institution working on sustainable finance about bringing sustainable development to financial institutions in a way that enables them to integrate development impacts and a concern with development impacts in their financial transactions and, and business models. It's very much about fusing together a uh, development focus and a financial focus in a way that can deliver both financial and development uh, return. Just briefly, what is the Academy? The Academy, the SDG Finance Academy is indeed about training and that's uh, a lot about uh, what we'll be talking about today when we come to the to the e-modules, but it's also about uh, uh, building partnerships, curating experts, helping uh, countries and different stakeholders access knowledge as well as expertise as they build their uh, sustainable finance uh, portfolios. Um, we have over the last a year and a half, I think it is, not two years, really quite a short amount of time, delivered the Academy across 115 countries through five regional uh, 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 bureau as UNDP, reaching some 430 plus staff in UNDP, including our senior leadership, uh, the resident representatives, but also reaching government and private sector. And this is where we're really looking to scale up our support moving forward. Some 400 participants from 33 governments have participated in the academy and, and more than 600 plus uh, from private sector entities uh, taking uh, uh, our courses on uh, SDG finance, sustainable finance. And most excitingly, even just 10 days ago, the launch of our e-learning program has already been completed by more than, well, close to 900 uh, participants just in, in 10 days. So, you know, it's, it's obviously a topic that is really uh, uh, high in demand, both from our development partners and from our financial institution 
uh, partners. And uh, not only is there demand, but there's also uh, a, a, a strong focus on quality. And I, I know that the e-learning courses are, are receiving uh, very high ratings in terms of, of their quality. Now, uh, let me just finish by uh, saying a little bit about those uh, e-learning modules. Uh, they cover 10 uh, courses currently uh, spanning public finance, budgets, tax, debt instruments, sovereign risk instruments, as well as covering private capital, unlocking private capital, building pipelines uh, for financing, as well as uh, integrating a concern with impact management and measurement in uh, private sector operations. And then finally, a, 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 mo a, mod a set of modules around the integrated national financing frameworks as a framework for bringing public and private finance together behind sustainable development. They're really uh, interactive. There's animation, videos, quizzes, um, and, uh, and, and a real opportunity to, to build a practical understanding and a common understanding as well across partners on sustainable finance. More modules forthcoming. Modules will be translated, different languages, currently only available in English, but that's, that's going to change very soon. So a very exciting time to be launching uh, these e-modules uh, and uh, really looking forward to a very interactive session uh, now. Uh, I'm gonna close my uh, framing remarks because really I know we all wanna hear more about how the rubber really hits the road when it comes to capacity development on the ground. And as I've said earlier, we're really lucky to have a, a fantastic panel with us today uh, to talk through uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ways in which training capacity development can really help enhance uh, processes of change that build a more sustainable finance architecture, particularly at the country level. Uh, and we'll be uh, uh, hearing both from a, a UNDP country office as well as from a Ministry of Finance uh, at the country level. But also uh, we'll be hearing uh, uh, from a, a more private sector perspective, both again from a, a UNDP colleague as well as from a colleague from a, a finance house. So uh, you'll see uh, that uh, panel there on the slide and we're going to begin by uh, asking our colleague uh, Gabrielle uh, Bottino. I'm gonna, I, 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 I apologize in advance to our panelists. I'm not gonna give, we've got some fantastic resumes, long credentials, uh, just to take it as read that uh, these colleagues really know what they're talking about. Uh, Gabrielle uh, is our deputy resident representative in, in UNDP Uruguay. And, Gabrielle, let's start with you. I wanted to just uh, ask you a, a question really about, uh, I know there was an academy, uh, SDG Finance Academy in, in Uruguay. And, you know, I want to, you know, perhaps uh, tease out from you a little bit about how it has helped, it's provided support, I hope, in, uh, in the endeavours there. And I know that there was a, a really exciting issuance of, uh, the first sovereign sustainability sustainability linked bond in in Uruguay last uh, well in the, in the last six months or so, so um, great to hear also about any connection between uh, you know training capacity development and our sustainable finance effort and that particular uh, uh, transaction. But uh, Gabrielle, over to you uh, for five or so minutes, if that's okay, Gabrielle. Sure. Thank you, Tom. Uh, hi, colleagues. Thank you for the invitation and uh, for uh, in, invite our our country office to to share our experience. Uh, from our side, we are extremely grateful for the, the support we received from from the uh, academy and from that experience because it's helped us. We work together in the support we provided to the country. We had a, a first experience a, a year and a half ago. Uh, focusing on uh, public uh, on policy makers and trying to uh, leverage the field about the knowledge 
we all have, and we all had at that time, about uh, sustain sustainable finance and the importance of uh, sustainable finance regarding the achievement of the of the SDG and of the uh, 23 agenda. And uh, we started sharing information and gathering all the main stakeholders together, working with IFIs, with the government, with banks, trying to prioritize which were the, the main development challenges in the in, in the country. And as you said, we started working in the uh, construction of a of an uh, uh, SLB bond, a sustainability link bond, supporting the government on their first uh, issuance of uh, a bond that has uh, it's a it's a, a very new type of bond because it has a, a step up and a step down uh, regarding the the accomplishment and achievement of two KPIs related to to climate change, and we also develop a set of instruments to uh, with other stakeholders uh, in the in, in the government arena. We are working on a. Uh, on the first impact bond in the country uh, related to uh, dual education and to uh, and to the labor market we develop an investor map we are a key part key actors on the uh, sustainable finance round table in the country and we are working hand by hand with with IFIs and with the government developing new developing new instruments that we will uh, soon share uh, with you with type of uh, innovative uh, uh, development we are supporting right uh, right now and the academy uh, supported us on that uh, evolution and uh, sophisticating the type of help and support that we need so the last month uh, Luciana and, and entire team were here to uh, support us in going deeper with banks, with uh, the central bank, with financial institutions and with uh, local funds in terms of trying to have a deeper knowledge on specific instruments that could be developed in the, uh, in the near future. For the next couple of years, we have developed a, a, a theory of, of, of change, and we want to focus on uh, capital rising, on impact and transparency, on efficiency of public spending and investment, and trying to support uh, market development of new instruments and uh, going uh, further and deeper, as, as I said before, in the in the instrument that we are already uh, developing developing together with the with the government. So for us, it, it is a journey. It was a journey where the the academy was extremely helpful to gather the, the, the epistemic community to uh, leverage the, the type of knowledge we needed to move forward and to go deeper in, in specific aspects where we want to double click on where we want to uh, make a, a zoom in and to support the government in development new new instruments. So uh, we are, as I said, extremely grateful for your support and we hope that we can continue this evolution and moving together in trying to uh, develop new solution at the at the country office level and share these experiences with other regions and other countries uh, in order to scale uh, scale at this type of uh, initiatives. Thank you, Tom. I hope I made that in, in time. And if you need anything from us, we are here to 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 provide any support from from our side. Well, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Gabrielle and. Uh, Thank you for, for, for being so concise. I know colleagues uh, will have questions around uh, uh, the work there in, in Uruguay, I'm sure, and uh, we'll come back to that in the, in the Q&A uh, section. And I just wanted to you know, emphasize, uh, thank you, Gabrielle, for highlighting how the Academy was delivered there as a country-based face-to-face initiative tailored to the needs and the context there in Uruguay. And that's very much something that the Academy is working to offer any country uh, uh, around uh, uh, the world as they take forward their sustainable finance endeavors. And I'm now gonna turn, uh, if I can, to Dr. Charles uh, Mwamwaja of the Ministry of Finance in uh, United Republic of, of 
Tanzania, if that's okay. Uh, uh, Charles, can I see you there? There you are. Thank you so much for uh, for joining us. And uh, I know, of course, that uh, working in the Ministry of Finance and working within the public sector, uh, you, you are uh, uh, very much abreast of some of the capacity institutional challenges that, uh, that uh, need to be overcome in driving forward a, a sustainable finance agenda. And I, I wondered whether you could tell us a little bit about how perhaps you've engaged with us around capacity building, you know, particularly, I think, uh, in relation to, to uh, SDG standards. Uh, 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 that would be really helpful if you could let us know a little bit, Charles, about your experience there. I can't I can't quite hear you. I, I think your mute button. Charles, uh, frustratingly for all for you and all of us, we still can't quite hear you. Nah, I can see your lips moving, but can't hear. I wonder, uh, uh, Nadine, colleagues, if we could help Charles out a bit with with that. Unfortunately, and... this seems on uh, Charles' end. Uh, maybe we can move on to Luciana while Charles figure this out. Figure this out. Oh, okay. Charles, you want to have one last go at speaking? Otherwise, we'll come back to you. Yeah, not working. I think we'll come back to you, Charles, if that's okay. Hopefully, we can sort that out um, and, uh, and and work through how to, to hear from your experience there, which I know colleagues are now uh, really looking forward to. But, uh, Charles, let's come back to you. I, I, I Let me hand over now uh, in, instead uh, to uh, my colleague, Luciana. Luciana uh, works with us. Uh, in the UNDP Sustainable Finance Hub uh, with uh, uh, lots of experience around the world and uh, now is particularly uh, engaged also in Latin America. And I wanted to know uh, a bit from you, Luciana, about you know how the uh, Academy has not just worked in, in, in sort of terms of training and capacity development, but also, you know, has created some momentum through perhaps uh, inspiring uh, countries to learn from each other's experience, to replicate uh, capacity development initiatives. Luci Luciana, can you say a, a little bit more about how you see this in the Latin American context? Yeah, what, what we've seen in Latin America in particular, I think that the, the, the training on impact management management across the academy has been amazing. We've been able to exchange experiences between country offices and that's where we learn and also between different actors, private and public se sector actors. Uh, what we've seen across uh, the different initiatives, particularly in Latin America, is that we see more and more the engagement of the stock exchange, uh, central banks, the banking sector, as well as uh, of governments. So the impact measurement management is usually seen as an initiative for the private sector is being more and more engaged with governments. governments. And mostly uh, what we've seen as well is that uh, the country offices in Latin America are also willing to learn from, from other experiences across the globe. So in, as part of the offer, We've seen very successful initiatives, for instance, with the uh, national development banks, with the training for association of Brazilian uh, development banks, which really allows us to channel uh, finance uh, to the last mile and also be able to uh, prove the development returns that these banks are, are, are presenting in, in Brazil and also in Latin America. Uh, I'd like to just to highlight, Tom, that we've seen also very concrete results coming from these trainings, besides those that we we'll see today, uh, but mostly uh, we are seeing in Central Asia, for instance, uh, a training in three countries with the Aid for Trade uh, project, engaging governments, private sector, and uh, small enterprises. Uh, the same applies to our partnership uh, and our trainings that have resulted in very concrete uh, projects to uh, the uh, country office in um, Jamaica, also in uh, particularly in uh, Chile, 
in Brazil, as I mentioned, Uruguay, as you see, but also in Dominican Republic. We are in the second round of trainings in Dominican Republic, bringing uh, not only impact measurement management, but, but also the SG impact standards to the private sector in these countries. So this is it from my side. I feel that the numbers are quite impressing, uh, impressive in terms of what we have delivered in the last two years of trainings on impact measurement and management. Some of the numbers are around 20, 21 training sessions across 16 different countries. And we have engaged around 691 individuals, including government servants, investment authorities, banks, investors, and enterprises of different sizes operating across various sectors. So over to you, Tom, this is, this is it from my side. Thank you. Thanks so much, Luciana, also for uh, taking us uh, global in uh, in the uh, remarks you provided and uh, it, great to hear about how this sustainable finance learning has a certain sort of spillover uh, effect from, from country to country and institution to institution where uh, perhaps uh, demand is being generated uh, as as the academy implements uh, from from place to place and partner to partner, and really just to highlight again from from your remarks how important it is that there is a common understanding of sustainable finance across public and private sectors if we're ever to be able to achieve the sorts of systemic change that uh, that we need to to finance the SDGs. Now, I know colleagues are frantically working through how to contact Charles and bring Charles uh, back into the conversation. Charles, are you there? Just uh, just checking. Still there physically, but perhaps not audibly. So, uh, Charles, I, I I don't know. Well, let's continue to try and help you out there. I see you've got some assistance as well. Let's uh, let's see if we can make this work. Uh, we've still got some time, and I'm going to pass now. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, neatly segueing from from Luciana's comments to our colleague Mohammed Alara Bead from the Kuwait uh, Finance House to really get a sense of how. Uh, impact management and, and measurement uh, has uh, has been uh, or is being adopted by the Kuwait Finance House and how knowledge perhaps provided through the academy is enabling that uh, process. Mohammed, is it OK if I pass over to you and we hear your perspectives? Yes, Tom. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Mohammed Al Arbid from Kuwait Finance House. It is an honor to share our experience in Kuwait Finance House with you. Uh, first of all, before I jump on your uh, answer your question, Tom, let me just give a very quick brief about uh, Kuwait Finance House. Uh, Kuwait Finance House is the largest bank in, in Islamic bank in Kuwait and also the largest bank in Kuwait. Um, uh, we work in uh, several countries, uh, such as Turkey, Malaysia, Bahrain, UK, Germany, and Egypt. Um, we have uh, a very good experience uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in the sustainability in the past two years. Uh, actually, because I think uh, we, 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 as we are uh, Islamic bank, uh, the, the Islamic principle is uh, uh, very linked with the, 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 the SDGs itself. So uh, as uh, Kuwait Finance House is committed to, to the sustainability and, sustain, and sustainable finance, uh, uh, Kuwait Finance House believe that sustainability is a core part of business philosophy. And also we believe in the power of uh, finance to drive a positive change in society to ensure our long-term success. Uh, we have signed with the, with the UNDP uh, uh, OMOU just to, to, to develop uh, uh, our uh, people in Kuwait Finance House and give them the, the full awareness about the sustainability. And we have a very good experience last uh, uh, June 
uh, we get uh, uh, specific training courses about the, the sustainability for uh, our executive management. And uh, it was a, a very, very, very success uh, story in uh, adopting the IMM, the, uh, the impact uh, management, uh, management uh, and measurement. Uh, actually, there is several factors uh, drove KFH to embark of the, uh, uh, the journey of impact management and measurement. Firstly, our committed to align with the global sustainability goals, the SDGs, SDGs. and uh, as the SDGs are a blueprint for a better and more sustainable future, and we want to play our part as a leading Islamic financial institution, institution to achieve the, 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 the SDGs goals. We think in, in our journey with the impact management and measurement, it has just begun. And we have took initially steps to conduct the IMM training and workshops with our partner in the UNDP for, as I said, for our senior man, uh, management uh, to focus on building in our internal capacity and uh, uh, try to adopt the IMM also in, 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 in our group and other, other banks uh, in other countries which we KFH is work. So uh, this is a, a very uh, short uh, description about what happened with IMM. So uh, this is from my end. Uh, back to you, Tom. Well, thank you so much, sir, for your your uh, your uh, uh, sharing on the journey, as you put it, that you're undertaking on uh, impact management and, and measurement. And, and again, to emphasise that this is very much the spirit of the Academy, that uh, we work together across partners uh, around uh, the integration of, of sustainable development into our business practices and indeed that this takes time that we we need to uh, embark upon a journey but that at least we have in front of us uh, a common understanding of the landscape the, the the map that we need to navigate uh, towards uh, the uh, sustainable development goals so thank you so much my habit now i'm i'm uh, i'm uh, nervous to ask but i'm going to ask one more time charles if We've managed to sort out those audio issues. If, uh, oh, Charles, I said, hello? Oh dear, such a, a, a pity, uh, Charles. We still can't seem to hear you. Um, now we've still got some time, so I, I'm gonna open up uh, the, the floor for some Q&A. And uh, as we do that, Charles, I do hope uh, somehow we manage to uh, unlock uh, the uh, audio uh, issue. So uh, as uh, we 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 wait uh, for Charles, uh, let's let's start by uh, uh, fielding a few questions for the panelists. And I know uh, the team uh, has been looking through the chat and uh, trying to uh, synthesize a few uh, questions. So I'm going to now. Um, uh, ask a, ask a, a question, and it may be Luciana or others that can respond to this, because I know a question has come around how we tailor training, you know, uh, and this is really important, not just in relation to country context, but also in terms of the entities that we're working with. And the question really is around SMEs and how to tailor training for you know, different sized enterprise as they embark upon uh, what Mohammed called their journey towards more impactful uh, business practices uh, through impact management and measurement. So, Luciana, can you tell us a little bit about you know how do we tailor training, uh, cognizant of the fact that different enterprises, different sizes of enterprises, have different needs and interests. Well, our trainings are all tailored. Actually, the, the materials that we have developed, including the tools and the training programs that we have under the academy, they were developed as we trained enterprises of different sizes, from corporations to SMEs. 
With SMEs in particular, we have a very interesting uh, experience with financial institutions, tailoring trainings for them, and also for uh, the teams inside of the financial institutions so that they can streamline IMM trainings for the SMEs. They start collecting uh, uh, information related to their impact and mostly uh, helping them to internalize these tools as part of their technical assistance for the SMEs. So uh, we have case studies that are has been developed with SMEs and types, uh, early stage startups where these enterprises have collected data and started building the case on how they're generating impact on the SDGs in particular. So it, uh, the trainings are also uh, context-based. So looking uh, on the development priorities of each one of the countries and how the private sector can contribute to achieve uh, those commitments that were made by the governments. And the SMEs are great contributors on this, and they are very uh, strongly engaged with the trainings that we, we deliver so far. This is it. I, I can provide more information later and share the case studies with you. Over, Tom. Well, thank you so much, uh, Luciana, for talking us through some of that uh, that tailoring, um, and uh, hopefully. Uh, uh, you have uh, managed to answer the, the question the colleague asked, but uh, please do ask more if if you would like uh, more. There was also a question which, uh, you know, I, I used the uh, term where, where the rubber hits the road. And, and this question really is about where the rubber hits the road, because it's a question about, uh, you know, how this actually leads to the generation of finance for the SDGs. You know, it's all very well doing trainings and capacity development on sustainable finance, but how does it actually lead to uh, changes in financial flows for sustainable development? And um, I actually thought maybe uh, uh, both uh, uh, Mohammed and Gabrielle, you might want to hazard a, a go at answering this one. I mean, maybe Gabrielle, uh, you know, we, we, we briefly alighted upon the sustainability linked bond in Uruguay. I mean, clearly an instrument that's unlocked additional capital. You know, maybe that's something you could say a, a little bit about. And then Mohammed, maybe just to turn to you and, uh, you know, on this IMM journey, you know, how do you see it actually leading to uh, additional finance for uh, sustainable development? So, Gabrielle, maybe to you first. Yeah, uh, thank you, Tom. Just uh, two quick, quick examples. One is uh, the, the one you have just mentioned related to the to, to the SLB bond, and other is... Uh, Related to the to the training we had a, a couple of weeks ago, but it's it's the same pattern and, and the same and the same case applies to to what I want to say. We are supporting the government, for example, to develop develop KPIs and to improve how to measure and how to create a, a, an indicator, so they can develop financial instruments to get money or to lend money. Uh, related to these specific instruments that your team and the SDG Academy supported to create and to develop or to improve. So the FAPS, the, the retirement funds in Uruguay are, are trying to develop new instruments to lend uh, money to the, local, uh, to the local market from a more sustainable perspective. And well, they don't have the instruments and they don't know how to proceed and uh, from the the uh, academy, they got the tools to develop KPIs and to develop the instruments to follow up on this pathway on on how to to create new uh, new instruments in that uh, in that regard. Back to you. Great, thank you, uh, Gabrielle and uh, Mohammed. Any thoughts on this one? Hello. Yes, uh, actually, I want to share a, a very success story uh, about issuing uh, green sukuk in, uh, in Turkey. And uh, uh, it was uh, really a good, a good uh, chance to uh, describe how uh, the, uh, the, the, the sustainable finance in, 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 in sukuk market or in bond market. Uh, actually, in, in Kuwait Finance House, we have now uh, working on uh, a very specific product, 
regarding the small farmers in Kuwait and how we can help the, the, the farmers in, uh, in growing their business and uh, expanding the, the, the market in, 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 uh, for the small uh, farmers. Also, uh, another product uh, which we are working on, uh, something for the SMEs uh, and uh, something for the, uh, the women empowerment also, a very specific product for uh, the, uh, the, the, the women uh, who are uh, leading uh, the small and uh, medium companies in Kuwait. Brilliant, uh, Mohammed. That is fantastic. Such practical examples, which are very much a feature of the uh, academy and the e-learning modules, to learn from different examples where change has actually happened in unlocking finance for sustainable development. I think I'm uh, right in saying, Charles, that we can hear you now. Is, is, is that you, Charles? You? Yes, that's me. How are you? I, I'm well. I, I, yes, thank you for your persistence. We're going to have to ask you to speak up as loudly as you can because there's still a bit of distortion, but we've got you now, Charles. So please do share uh, as, uh, as, uh, as I know you were prepared right. to. Thank you very much, Tom, for this uh, opportunity. And again, my apology for having this uh, problem with the microphone. Many apologies. But now I think I'm connected, and I think I can contribute an idea also to this uh, useful discussion. I'm very thankful to UNDP for this particular issue. And uh, maybe uh, for Tanzania, we have something that we can uh, probably share with the rest of the community especially in relation to sustainable financing. Now, probably briefly, uh, I would like to talk about uh, three things. The first one is about the availability um, of very conducive policies that support the sustainable financing approaches. And uh, we have our policies uh, currently, we are implementing the first year development plan, and uh, part of the issues that have been highlighted in that plan is also the need to raise financial resources. We have numbers, and the numbers indicate that we need to raise about uh, 40 trillion Tanzanian shillings from the private sector to complement what the government is doing in terms of financing of development projects. So the government is in support of that, and we have all the necessary legal and regulatory requirements. And that is the second aspect. We have also uh, an environment which is also good. We have a regulator in this country. We have what we call the capital markets and the securities authority, who is regulating uh, the capital markets and the securities issuances in this country. So the legal and the regulatory framework is well in place, but again, as I said earlier, that the government is also in full support of this particular initiative. Now, coming to the third aspect, and I think uh, probably that would be of much interest, is in fact having these uh, products uh, in, in place. And the good thing about uh, Tanzania is that uh, we have a very well articulated uh, purposeful strategy to do with the innovative finance, which we call the ATF. The ATF is the alternative project financing strategy that clearly indicates the need to work together with the private sector in raising finance. Now, there are two issues that we are encountering in this process. The first one, when it comes to sovereign issuances, our markets are doing very good. We have a number of corporate issuances in the market. But another thing which we are focusing very much currently is to do with the sovereign issuances. So on the part of sovereign, there are two issues that we are addressing currently. The first one is the capacity issue, because when it comes to issues related to sustainable financing, you need to have uh, projects that are bankable 
and attracting to investors. So that is one of the issues that we are addressing currently. And the second one is the need to have in place the necessary framework that will be uh, providing guidance on how this uh, particular related instruments are going to be issued. And we are very much thankful for UNDP because they had sent a team here in Tanzania as part of this capacity building. And together with our, our, our local team, we are currently in the process of uh, finalizing a framework that will guide the issuances of sovereign instruments. Uh, currently, the team is working on that, and probably by end of this month, we will be in a position to share. And uh, on the part of the government, we have a team which we have formed. We call it the National Facilitation Team. And the part of the issue that this team is addressing is the capacity building issue. Because what we have observed is that there is a lot of potential in the market, and there is also a lot of appetite. But uh, in most cases, they need to build capacity so that we can have projects that are attractive and bankable for that matter. That is a great issue that we are working So I think uh, briefly, because I know that I've used much of your time, and my apology again, but we believe that with that framework it is, we will now be uh, in a position to issue a number of instruments that will be in the line with addressing SPD issues. We are planning for a number of green bonds, we are planning for a number of infrastructure issuances, social bonds, and the related ones. So briefly, that is the position we are in. Thank you, Tom, for your patience. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Charles, uh, for uh, again your patience and persistence in uh, in 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 in, in uh, the panel discussion. It was wonderful to hear from you. It's really rounded out a great panel with public sector perspectives, international organisation, uh, private uh, sector perspective so uh, so really thankful and and actually you've helped me I think there was a question in the in the chat around you know UNDP's niche you know this is a, a space the, the the sustainable finance space where there are many different actors and what does UNDP I think the question was what does UNDP do that you know it's it's different what what is it that it does uh, differently and um what I what I I think Charles, you've also helped articulate is actually maybe it's not a question about doing things differently, but how we bring ourselves together uh, around the agenda of sustainable finance. That's that's really I think the challenge in front of us. And you know we heard from you as well as the other colleagues how uh, it, it requires partnerships across financial institutions and development institutions to really deliver the change that we're looking for uh, in the sustainable finance architecture. You know, a few examples, which, by the way, you will also come across in the e-modules, which uh, are very much uh, a launching pad for uh, our partnership, we hope, with an expanding number of finance institutions and, and development institutions. Some of the examples, you know, that perhaps help us tell this story is, you know, for example, we work with the IMF on public finance management on budget reform you know we know that they bring a, a, a legacy a history of engagement a capacity you know a, a very significant capacity on public financial management reform but we bring uh, a huge uh, experience and history on uh, sustainable development that we can fuse with that uh, expertise that uh, the IMF has to help support what we, we work uh, with ministries of finance towards, which is uh, public financial management systems that deliver sustainable development. We heard from our, uh, our colleague Mohammed in the Kuwait Finance House how, you know, it's important for this impact management measurement journey to be undertaken, not, not, not by the Kuwait Finance House on its own, 
but with the support of a development institution like UNDP. We bring uh, that uh, that uh, added value to to the work there, if I, Mohammed, understood you correctly. And we we heard also about uh, the bond issuance in in uh, Uruguay. And again, we bring the climate NDC knowledge, the sustainable development understanding of the context, which complements the work of finance institutions. For example, in that case, the Inter-American Development Bank in issuing a sustainability linked bond. So I just wanted to, uh, to, to say here that it's not so much about differentiating ourselves, but really collaborating in new ways around sustainable finance. And again, that the e-modules, which I know many of you have already done and many will want to do, are really a taster to get you going in understanding some of the ways in which we fuse those capacities on sustainable development and finance together. Now, I'm just going to have a, a look. I see Marcos Nito has joined us. He's the director of our Sustainable Finance Hub and will be bringing us to a, a, a close shortly. I think uh, we're running out of time, so we'll perhaps need to turn to Marcos now, unless uh, there are any burning questions, um, which uh, if there are any questions in the chat, I haven't managed to read all of them, that are unanswered. We will endeavour to answer them after the webinar and get back to, to you with some, uh, some uh, answers and further information. But... Uh, if that's OK, uh, thanks again to the wonderful panelists and uh, thanks for sharing your time with us, uh, participants. And I'll hand over to you, Marcos, for some closing thank, remarks. Thank you very much, Tom. And, and, and it's a pleasure to be here with all of you and, and delighted to see so many people from all over the world. Um, good morning, good afternoon, good, good, good evening, whatever you are. Let me first I start by thanking Tom for moderating his insight as well, uh, Dr. Charles, uh, my dear friend Gabriel, uh, Mohammed, uh, for joining the spaces in Luciana and having this insightful conversations, which um, I am unfortunately missed. Um, but um, I'm pretty sure they was was very good in that sense. Um, I want to pick up perhaps where Tom was talking. You know, when we set it up the Sustainable Finance Hub. Um, you know, almost five years ago now, um, the objective was never to duplicate or to do what others necessarily were doing it, but was to infuse, right, um, in financial institutions, in public finance processes, a sense of urgency and a sense of focus regarding the sustainable development goals. And then later on, the Paris Agreement and other of those policies. Um, the notion... And I think uh, it's pretty clear the notion that financing is one of the problems by which the SDGs are off track. And we know off track, we just finished an SDG summit here in New York, uh, in which it's pretty clear that the SDG is off track. Despite that, it is the best agenda and perhaps the only agenda that we can manage to master 100, across 193 countries in the world today. Right, so we need to, to work to bring it back on track and finance it is both a problem as well as a solution to bring it on track. Um, however, we're not going to solve, we're not going to bring the money that are in um, if we don't get the, the, the finance in public and private to think and to understand how the alignment of finance to the SDG is necessary. Now, that also means capacity building. For us, it's becoming very clear in the last few years that, uh, you know, there are wonderful intentions, both in the private sector, as well as in governments, in terms of, you know, going forward and look at their finances, public and private, and commit it to, you know, make capital flows towards the Paris Agreement and towards the SDGs. But, but there is a challenge in how to do that happen. You know, what does it mean? And, and sometimes great intentions done in a slightly different way or in a slightly uh, incomplete way can even backfire <clears throat> the whole conversations around the world on green washing and whatever you, you're talking about. So we thought that 
based on our experience, based on our desire to make sure that capital flows to emerging market economies and to the SDGs, mm -hmm. it was important to also help um, government institutions, private sectors, and others um, with capacity building. I think it is becoming clear across the world that the issue of capacity building is regaining preeminence around sustainable finance, being the European Union, being the G20, you now with the endorsement in the daily declaration of a G20 technical assistance action plan on sustainable finance, which we at UNDP are going to lead the creation of a mechanism to implement this action plan. You know, so I think there is a renaissance, if you want, on the need to provide capacity building. We heard, for example, I've heard in some policy conversations globally that, you know, even if we were to get all the money ready, can countries absorb the money? Do they have the capacity to absorb the money? So, and I think that is why is the push on capacity building for us. You have those modules, those are the beginning of our e-modules. You know, we are still providing support like we did with Mohammed and the colleagues in Kuwait on a one-on-one -on -one basis and physical. So don't forget that we are still ready to support our country offices and government partners uh, when necessary face-to-face. -face. So it's not that the e-learning completely replace that experience of uh, presential training. Um, but I do ask you to go through the modules, to disseminate them as, as, as widely as you can, to provide us feedback, right? <clears throat> this is not a one-off exercise. Those modules can and should be adapted. We need to learn from the people that go through what does work, what can become better. So please provide the feedback necessary with, with, with that. Um, with that in mind, Tom, I just want to thank everybody in our own team and then Lauren, Bradford and the team that have worked so hard to put this together. This is our contribution to a much larger ecosystem. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you, to have you disseminate those models, to have us tell us that, you know, they are useful and they are helpful. Um, and um, count on you NDP to be your partners going forward on this process. Whoever you are and for our own staff around the world, count on the Sustainable Finance Hub, right? Uh, to, to help you deliver on, on, on our strategic plan and our uh, one trillion more shot. Thank you very much and have a great time wherever you are. Um, and we're looking forward to the continuous conversation. Great, bye -bye. thanks everyone. Thanks, Marcos. Bye-bye everybody. Bye. Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone.